Ukraine has destroyed the third and last permanent bridge across the Syme River in the Kursk region. Russian military telegram channels write about this. The bridge was destroyed near the village of Kariz in the Glushkovsky district. The bridge in neighboring Zvanoy was destroyed recently. Russian military publics write that the Russian army has already built pontoon bridges across the river, and therefore the destruction of the bridges does not have a critical impact on the logistics of Russian units. The bridge attacks, apparently aimed at thwarting a Russian counter-push in Kursk, could mean that Kiev intends to seek a foothold in the region. Pro-Kremlin military bloggers acknowledged that the destruction of the first bridge on the Syme River near the town of Glushkovo will impede deliveries of supplies to Russian forces repelling Ukraine's incursion, although Moscow could still use pontoons and smaller bridges. Ukraine's Air Force chief, Mykola Olshchuk, released a video of an airstrike that cut the bridge in two. After this Ukrainian troops hit a second bridge in Russia, according to Olshchuk and Russian regional governor Alexei Smirnov. Russian telegram channels claim that a second bridge over the Syme, in the village of Zvano, had been struck. Kiev said it had seized more than 80 settlements over 1,150 square kilometers in Kursk since launching a surprise strike across the border on August 6, the biggest invasion of Russia since World War II. About two dozen Russian soldiers out of several hundred brought to the Kursk region from St. Petersburg managed to escape from the training ground where they were stationed before being thrown into battle against the Ukrainian armed forces. The telegram channel Astra writes about this, citing relatives of the Refuseniks. They report that soldiers who did not want to fight and were forcibly transferred from St. Petersburg to a training ground near Kursk were given weapons and taken away in an unknown direction. My husband called me. He said that about 20 soldiers managed to escape. No one really looked for them, said the wife of one of the Russian soldiers. According to her, they are all registered in the village of Kamenka in the Leningrad region, and if something happens to her husband, there is no compensation to be expected. My husband says, even if I fall ill here, you won't get anything. No payments. Nothing. According to the document, he simply isn't there in Kursk Oblast, the woman says. Earlier, Astra reported that at least 500 people were taken out of the military settlement of Kamenka near St. Petersburg, where the 138th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade is based, and where several hundred men who refused to fight were held. Some of the refusers had already been charged with abandoning their units, they were under investigation and some were awaiting a military commission. Among those under arrest were men with health problems, physical and mental. Also, Astra learned that on August the 8th in Kamenka, a soldier involved in the case of abandoning his unit attempted to die by suicide. The soldier is planned to be sent to a mental hospital. It has been reported that thousands of Russian men are fleeing their country in order to avoid being conscripted into the army. Russian President Vladimir Putin has launched Operation Revenge, says Julian Robka, expert of Build Tabloid. A few days after Putin promised to give a worthy response to Ukraine's invasion of the Kursk region, Russian war correspondents began publishing horrific footage and videos from Russians showing destroyed Ukrainian military equipment and mutilated dead soldiers. Ukraine uses 200 to 300 military vehicles and several thousand soldiers in the Kursk region. We see that Russia managed to disable about 30 to 40 vehicles, probably up to 10% of the Ukrainian armed forces vehicles, says Robka. Russian propagandists willingly film dead Ukrainian soldiers on their smartphones, rip blue and yellow flags from their uniforms and collect their military IDs as trophies of their work. Rubka believes that this cruelty is demonstrative. In one of the videos, the bodies of Ukrainian soldiers are piled on top of each other, which could also be a sign of staging. Prisoners also become victims of the Russians' anger and hatred. Black bags are put on their heads, and in some cases insults and mockery are heard. 
At the same time, Ukrainian activists and Western correspondents are reporting unprecedented bombings of towns and villages in the neighboring Sumy region, where units are being deployed for an offensive on Russian territory. Brutal revenge has not helped the Russian army much. So far, Ukrainian troops have managed to further expand their presence in the Kursk region in the last few days. At least four more settlements have been captured since August the 14th. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, Russian troops have managed to recapture one village in the last 24 hours. Russia, however, continues to send more and more reinforcements to Kursk. Soldiers are being pulled in from such distant regions as Kaliningrad, Murmansk and Grozny. Airplanes and helicopters are being used more and more often. Operation Revenge is only just beginning, Rubka said. Julian Rubka says that Ukrainian armed forces continue to expand their presence in the Kursk region. In addition to the city of Sudza, the Ukrainian armed forces have taken control of Lyubimovka and Sverdlikovo in recent days and have come very close to Koronevo and Martinovka. The offensive of the Ukrainian army in the Kursk region continues. For more than a week on the ninth day, Russia has not yet managed to stop the advance of the Ukrainians, Rubka notes. At the same time as Bild notes, Russian troops are advancing in the direction of Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region.